It's unlike anything you will ever read in the worst way possible. This one's not even just a crime against literature. This book is just a crime. I got nothing out of this after I read it, except a massive headache. Who was in the room when they decided to even publish this in the first place and was like, yeah, no, that should be published because it shouldn't have been. Hello, hi, welcome everybody. So if you know anything about me, you obviously know that I love to talk about the books that I love, but also to my core, I am one thing and one thing first. I am a hater. And lately I feel like I haven't had enough of an opportunity to be a hater. So today we are going to be tier ranking the worst books I have ever read because I really feel like complaining. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've done a tier ranking. It's been a minute since I've ranted about some books I don't like. So I feel like now is the perfect time to do so. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of people doing videos tier ranking their five star reads and like their favorite books, but I just recently made a video on my favorite books of all time. So I thought that I would do the opposite. I thought I would return to my hater roots and we would tier rank my one star reads, uh, the worst books that I've ever read so that I can rant about them all in one place. And I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Before we get any further into the video, I do want to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Book of the Month is an online book service curated for readers. They focus mostly on debut authors and up and coming authors, and they vet a bunch of new releases coming out each month so that you get a curated selection of books to choose from. And you can search through all of those and choose which one you would like to receive in your Book of the Month box. In my opinion, one of the greatest things about Book of the Month is their really affordable pricing. If you use my code for you and the link in the description box, you can get your first box for just five dollars five dollars for a brand new hardcover book which is just ridiculous you cannot find prices like that anywhere so that's just fantastic and it makes it really affordable which is so nice also they've recently launched audiobooks as well so if you're not interested in getting a hardcover and listening to an audiobook instead you can choose an audiobook for that month instead of the hardcover book they also have a really great policy where you can skip that month if you're not interested in any of the selections for that month and then just continue on your subscription and then continue your subscription into the next month so it's really convenient if you're just not interested in the selections for the month and you can resume anytime you'd like. So yeah, let me show you my current selections for book of the month. So my first book of the month pick was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is a book I have already read and loved. It's a YA fantasy with a rivals to lovers romance. It's fantastic. It's really emotional, amazing characters that'll make you fall deeply in love. I loved this book so I was really excited to see it as a book of the month option. And my second pick was actually super exciting. I was so glad to see it on there and it is What the River Knows by Isabella Benes. This is actually my book club pick for my book club, the A Clockwork Reader Book Club. So if you're interested in reading the book along with me for my book club, you can get yourself a copy from Book of the Month for a very affordable price. So yeah, this is historical fantasy YA with romance in it as well. It sounds like something I'm really gonna love, so I'm so excited to read this. So if you're interested in trying out Book of the Month for yourself, be sure to use my link and my code for you to get your first book for $5. Okay, but now without any further ado, let's get into tier ranking the worst books I've ever read. Tier ranking my one star reads. So this is my tier list. As you can see, I don't have as many tiers as I usually do. Usually I like to make a lot of tiers and I also did do something a little bit different. The top one is going to be like the absolute worst of the worst books and the bottom is going to be the ones that like I hate less than the, the top. So the top is god tier in terms of god tier garbage and then the bottom is the ones that I also hate but I just don't hate them as much as I hate the top ones. So yeah that's the order I decided to go with. So this time starting from the very bottom we have a bombastic side eye. Honestly I don't even know how many I'm gonna put in here. Um, it's really hard for me to distinguish between some of these. I just like really don't like any of them so a lot of them are probably gonna be in the higher tiers <laughs> but that's self-explanatory. I think I've used a version of that before for a tier list uh, but it just felt right. Right. Moving one tier up in uh, worsening quality, we have I've read better Wattpad fix. I've actually never read a Wattpad fic, but it just felt right. <laughs> I'm not a Wattpad girly, I am an AO3 girly and an OG fanfiction.net girly to my core, but everyone understands like the Wattpad reference specifically, so I had to go with that. And also because a lot of these are more Wattpad quality than they are AO3 quality. Then the next tier we have is should have stayed in the drafts. Again, self-explanatory. It should have stayed in the drafts. There was no reason for this to be published at all. I don't know why we published this. I don't believe in book banning by any means, but I do believe that there are some things that we just shouldn't have put out. As a society, we had no need for them and that's what I think of these books. Next up we have A Crime Against Literature. I read this and I'm like this is offensive to writing and storytelling as a craft. And then of course the very top tier, Right to Jail. These books are so bad 
send them right to jail. I don't want to see or hear from them ever again. Someone should pay for the crimes that were committed. But anyway, those are my tears. And now let's get into all the books. So if I counted correctly, I think I have 20 books here. The way I curated this list was I went through my Goodreads and I looked through my one star and unrated and two star books. And then I just picked out the ones that at this point in time, I feel like are the actual worst books I've read. There are a couple of books on this list that I think I rated two stars that honestly, at this point, I think I would bump them down to one star because I hate them so much. And there are a couple other books that I had rated one star or two stars that I just don't remember enough about and I didn't hate them. I just didn't really like them. I would just never consider them the worst books I've ever read and I wanted to keep this list to the actual worst of the worst that I've read. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the full ranking. Okay, so these are in no particular order, but starting off strong, we have November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I am going to put this book in a crime against literature, because that's what I think it is. This book is incel fantasy to its core. It is horrific to consider this a romance. It is one of the worst things that I have ever read, <laughs> hence its place on this list. And it physically pains me that this book is as popular as it is. As is the case with most of the books on this list, honestly. Putting this whole thing together and realizing how many of these books are some of the most beloved books of the modern age, that was a tough pill to swallow. It made me lose a little bit of hope for humanity, but it's okay. <laughs> but November 9, if you don't know and you want like full details with spoilers, you can go watch my Colleen Hoover video where I talk about literally all of the books that are on this list. It's unlike anything you will ever read in the worst way possible. I promise you, you don't need it in your life. The main love interest is, I think, probably my least favorite fictional man in existence. I can't think of anybody that I could possibly hate more. He's so horrible and I can't believe we're supposed to think of what he does as romantic. It's sickening, really. Anyway, that book has to go in a crime against literature. It's poorly written. Narratively, it's really not even that interesting and it makes no sense. It's like so insta-lovey, it's painful. And also the characters are some of the most horrendous, heinous people you will ever meet. So yeah. That's, that's where that's going. <laughs> Moving right along, we have a book named Torture Man by Warren Adler. You've probably never heard about this book unless you're an OG watcher of my YouTube channel and you saw that I did a review on this book years and years and years ago. I think the year I started my YouTube channel, so probably 2015. This book was sent to me by the author because he wanted me to review it. And this was early days for me, okay? So I was accepting like random books from random people because I was just amazed that anyone would even want to send me a copy of their books so that I could review it. So I used to take books to review from um, people who would email me because I was so new. I was so new to the reviewing thing. I was new to booktube. And I was willing to review people's work and help an author out early on then. I don't remember anything that happens in this book, but I do remember the horrible gut feeling I had after I read it and while I was reading it because this entire book is just misogynistic military propaganda and it's horrible horrible. But I do remember giving it a review on my YouTube channel and I think I was trying to be nicer to it because the author had reached out to me and sent me the book for free so I didn't want to be like disrespectful or something. But it's been years, I'm not 18 and I don't give a fuck anymore. So I will bash it, I don't care. At the time, according to my Goodreads review, I gave it 2.5 stars because again, I was trying to not be mean. But all of that's gone now. So I don't remember what I actually said about the book but I am gonna read you the summary. And based on the summary alone, you'll be able to tell how horrible this book was. I think this is the very, very first book anyone ever sent me. It was either the first or second, I can't remember, but it was very early on and I was willing to take anything. I did not understand how to discern what was good and what was not good to take. I was young, I was naive, I didn't know what I was doing, but let me just read you the summary. What happens when law enforcement isn't there to save you from a terrorist plot? A gripping edge of your seat thriller about one family's struggle against terrorism. The caller made it clear $10 million or her daughter's head. The power of unintended consequences sends the privileged life of prominent anti-war activist Sarah Rabb crashing down around her. Fear and terror take hold and Sarah turns to former CIA operative Carl Hellman, the fact that that's his name, <laughs> a man she has only just met and who stands against everything she's been fighting for. How could this happen? This is literally one of those like, she's a Democrat, he's a Republican, like white supremacy love stories. That's basically what it is. And it's written by a man. I don't know what I was thinking when I accepted this for review. And like reading this again, 
It's so bad. How could this happen? Why would a terrorist group target her family? Confusion turns to fear and anger as Sarah faces the shocking truth lying beneath the surface of her life. And although Carl's interrogation methods violate everything Sarah believes in, there may be a way to save her daughter's life. Faced with horrific choices, Torture Man takes the reader through an intense weekend where Wall Street kickbacks, deceit, corruption, and jihad collide on the Upper East Side of New York City. Tell me that that description alone is not one of the most racist things you've ever read. It's bad. It's really 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 bad. So fair warning to all the like new content creators out there, book talkers, booktubers, bookstagrammers, vet the emails you get, really look into what somebody wants to send you, and don't just accept books from any random person willing to send you something. I know it's exciting at the beginning, but you'll end up reading shit like Torture Man and then regret it deeply. So take it from me, don't do that. I'm gonna put this in a crime against literature because again, that is what it is. <laughs> Easily one of the most racist things I've ever read. It was horrific and it made me never want to read a book written by a man <laughs> ever again. Honestly, I could probably put Torture Man in Right to Jail. I just don't remember anything that happened in it. I think I just wiped it from my memory. So I could put it in Right to Jail, like if I were to reread it, which I never will. Just based on the concept alone, it should be in the top tier. Um, but because I can't remember enough, it's going in the second tier. Next up, we have A Little Life by Hange Yanagihara. You all know where this is going. Uh, this goes in Right to Jail. I hate this book. I hate it deeply. I know that people have such torn opinions on this. This is a book that like is not in this category because it's poorly written or anything like that. It's in this category because I think the story itself, the themes that it covers and the way it covers those themes is just horrible. <laughs> it's horrific to me. And in terms of like responsibility of the author and how you choose to tell a story and how you choose to portray certain things, that's where so much of my hatred comes from. I say this every single time, but I just feel like this book is so unbelievably irresponsible and it does so much harm. I know some people get a lot of um, comfort from this book and I know that it has helped people too. And that's of course fair if that's your feeling and that's your opinion. But personally, for me, I just feel like this book is the most irresponsible thing I've ever read especially when it's presented as something that's intended to be empathetic when it's in fact quite the opposite of that in my opinion. This book feels gratuitously violent and another book where based on everything I know about the author and the lack of research they did in order to write this book that gives me another layer of understanding of why I think this book doesn't work and why it is so harmful in so many ways. All right now moving on to the next book we have The Spanish Love Deception. I'm gonna put this in I've read better Wattpad fix. This one just gives Wattpad fic. I feel like this was something that was originally written on Wattpad, that's the thing. <laughs> this is not the worst thing I've ever read, but it's really not good at all. But in terms of romance, it is easily one of the worst romance books I've ever read. There's like no chemistry between the characters, the smut is really poorly written and boring, uh, the plot is not interesting, and it's not even what it says it is. Like it's like enemies to lovers, rivals to lovers, they're not even rivals or enemies. It's just so unbelievably dull. But it's not something that I find like personally offensive though either. So that's why it goes down there. Next up we have Slammed by Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna put this one in a crime against literature? Or maybe, yeah, I'm gonna put this in a crime against literature. I may end up putting all of them in there. <laughs> we'll see. This one's not even just a crime against literature. This book is just a crime. It's about a teacher-student relationship about a girl in high school, so criminal. Literally criminal. I could also put this in Right to Jail. I just think I hate other books more, maybe? I don't know, actually. I really can't decide which Coho book I hate the most. I hate them all for different reasons, but also somewhat of the same reasons, so they're all just meshed into one in my brain. Okay, next up we have Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. Oh my god, this is my OG least favorite book of all time. It's going in right to jail. She deserves jail for making Jacob imprint on Renesmee. I read this as a kid and I still thought it was crazy. So if my child brain that was obsessed with Twilight and thought that was the greatest series ever written could identify that this was literally criminal, you know it's bad. Like it's really, really bad. From the abstinence propaganda to the pro-life propaganda to Jacob literally imprinting on a fetus, an unfertilized egg actually, is just criminal. Criminal, okay? I can't believe this book was published half the time. I really can't believe that I read that as a kid. That so many of us just read this book and this just lives 
in society now. This just lives in the collective conscious. So many of us just know this information because one day Stephanie Meyer had a dream and that dream then came to haunt the rest of us for the rest of our lives. I will always be proud of myself for being an OG Breaking Dawn hater um, and I will remain a Breaking Dawn hater until I go to my grave because that shit vile absolutely vile all right next up we have the selection my best friend america singer um i think i'm gonna put it in i've read better wattpad fix it could go and should have stayed in the drafts because it's really bad like i really really don't like this book but i objectively don't think it's the worst thing i've ever read like i've read worse because this also reads like a wattpad fic it really really does i always say this when i mention this book but i know it was written for kids but this is a book that talks down to the reader and i hate when books do that it assumes that its reader is not intelligent enough to pick things up to put things together i think that that's just a sign of really bad writing i take something like this and compare it to something like the hunger games also written for kids also written in really really simple plain language that anyone can understand but that is not a book that talks down to the reader this is one that absolutely does that's where i'm gonna put the selection <laughs> next up we have 13 reasons why i feel like everyone has made this joke i've probably made this joke before but this book was my 13th reason so it's gonna go in it's gonna go and should have stayed in the draft it's not one of the worst things I've ever read. Actually, the TV show, however, is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. That deserves right to jail. Um, the book is also really, really bad. It's just not nearly as bad as the show was. I can't remember exactly because it's been a long time since I've read it. I do think I cried when I read it because it's just really, really sad. But it's another book that I think just doesn't handle the subject matter well. Like this is really heavy stuff that we're talking about and difficult stuff to write about and cover. And I feel like this book just doesn't do it properly. I still don't know why they ever chose to adapt this. Like, I would not read that book and think, yeah, this should be a TV show. That would probably be the last thing on my mind having just finished this book. Okay, next up we have Divergent by Veronica Roth. So I've only ever read the first Divergent book. I never kept going because I didn't like the first one. I have mentioned this before, but I read this immediately, I think, after I finished The Hunger Games the first time. And so it did not help that I had just read the Hunger Games and that is like my favorite series of all time so to follow it up with something this mediocre probably wasn't the best way to read it um had I read it maybe several books later or something I might have liked it a little bit more but even then it's just not good. I'm gonna put Divergent in bombastic side eye because I do think these other books are worse than Divergent. I just don't think that this book ever deserved the attention and the hype that it got. And in terms of dystopian, it really achieves absolutely nothing that that genre sets out to do. It's just using tropes that were common in the dystopian genre, like girl becomes the leader of a revolution, even though in these books there's no purpose to this revolution because the author didn't actually understand why she was writing this story. It was just meaningless. Um, which I find a lot of that post Hunger Games YA dystopian felt very meaningless because they were just trying to copy that story instead of coming up with something on their own. So they were all really, really whitewashed. And I mean that in every way. So yeah, that's why I don't like Divergent and it's going there. Next up, we have Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. This is going in right to jail. This is, to this day, probably the worst book I've ever read, my least favorite book of all time. Usually when people ask me that question, I usually answer with The Fountainhead. This book is horrible. I had to read this in high school. There's a scene in this book where the female character gets essayed, and our teacher in high school, whose class I had to read this for, literally made us debate whether or not it was actually essay. It was horrible, and that is not the only reason I hate this book, but it's partially because I feel like the author herself would have probably made people debate that question too, and I think she would have been on the side of um, it wasn't because uh, that's kind of how it is framed in the book because Ayn Rand is a raging misogynist and also um, came up with one of the worst philosophies known to humankind, objectivism. If you don't know what it is, objectivism basically just boils down to extreme um, self-interest and individualism and it's kind of just capitalist propaganda and she essentially just uses this book to put that philosophy out there. She uses the characters as mouthpieces to kind of just spew this idea at you. So it's just like a lot of in-your-face western individualist propaganda. It's also so long. It's like 800, 700 something pages and it's not good. It's also just really really boring. Forget the corrupt morals. It's also just horrible to read. It's really dull. Really, really dull. The plot is not interesting. There really isn't one to begin with, to be honest with you. There's no actual character development. It's not like a real story in a lot of ways. Anyway, I am an Ayn Rand and Fountainhead hater to my grave. If she has no haters left, I'm dead. All right, next up we have 
Fallen by Lauren Kate. This is a throwback, a book I read way, way, way back in the day, around the time I read Divergent, around the time that I read Twilight and everything, back in the middle school days. This was one of those Fallen Angel books of the time. If you all remember Fallen, I'm sure some of you do, some of you definitely read it, and then some of you are, I think, too young to even know about this book's existence, which makes me feel very old, but um, welcome. This was a different time. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even remember if I read the whole thing. I think I did, but I can't remember to be honest with you. I just remember really, really not liking it. I'm gonna put this in I've read better Wattpad fix because that feels right. It was another one of those books that was just like a repeat and a remake of every other fallen angel story and vampire story and everything that was popular at the time. So it was very much a product of its time, um, but it was also just not, not well done. Not at all. I don't think anyone actually liked this book. They did make a movie out of it, which is crazy um, because it wasn't that successful and nobody watched the movie, but I did. And it was really, really bad. <laughs> okay, next up we have Verity by Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna put this in a crime against literature as well because it is. <laughs> To market Verity as a thriller is so disrespectful to every other thriller book probably ever written <laughs> because nothing about this book is thrilling. It's not surprising. It's not interesting. It's just smut. Really, really bad smut. Really questionable smut when it comes to lines of consent um, and morality. <laughs> like, I don't have another way to describe it. It's just fucked up, but not even in the like interesting way where it's kind of like psychological. No, it's just bad. Like, it's just really, really bad. I walked away from reading this book being like, how on earth does anyone pretend like this is good? Like you have to be lying to yourself at this point. There's no other way. Anyway, crime against the entire thriller or romance or erotica genre in every way, shape, and form. I despise that book. Okay, next up we have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. I think I'm gonna put this, honestly, I'm probably gonna put this in bombastic side eye. This is not the worst book I've ever read. I do think everything that's above there is worse than this book. It's just not that good. This one, I get why people like it. I get why people have fun with it, but there are just much much better books out there. This is one of those books to me that's like, oh, you're not that into reading and you just got into reading and you haven't read a lot of these tropes before in your life. So you are being introduced to them for the first time. So that's what's gotten you into it. But if you've read like a decent amount of uh, YA fantasy or new adult fantasy, since this is technically new adult, then I just don't see like what the appeal of this is because it's just a less good version of every other book, which is how I feel about some of the next books that are on this list as well. I don't like it and I would never recommend this series to anybody. And based on what I know about the future books, I would really never recommend this series to anybody. So yeah, she's going there. Next up, we have Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. As time has gone on, I will say, because I did a review for this book uh, just a few months ago, actually. And I first originally gave it, I think like two stars, maybe two and a half stars or something. And I said that it wasn't like horrific or anything. It just wasn't very good. But as time has gone on, I feel like I hate it more and more. Like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that was just really, really bad. And I get more and more upset the more popular it gets because it just, it upsets me that something that's this mediocre could become this successful. At best, this book is just deeply okay. And at worst, it's really nonsensical in terms of world building and plot and also really bad military propaganda. I don't remember if I talked about this in my review, but the whole time I was reading it, I just got these intense military propaganda vibes to the point where I literally had to look up the author to see if that was like their vibe and I was correct. And a lot of her other work is military romances. Um, so that makes this book make so much more sense to me and why I didn't like it make a lot more sense to me. I am definitely gonna have to put this book in um, I've read better Wattpad fix, I think. Again, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but I do think it's worse than Akatar and Divergent. So yeah, it's going there. Next up, we have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna put this in should have stayed in the drafts. I think this is, in my opinion, probably it's so hard to say this, like the best of her work only because it feels the most real and the most emotional and the most genuine because it's obviously based off of her family's real life experiences. That's why the genuineness that comes across on page I think is the only thing that makes this book better than the other Colleen Hoover books I've read. But that being said, it's still really, really bad. It's not well written. I think it romanticizes some of the abuse that's depicted in here still, even though this one 
actually condemns some of it or actually even names it as abusive, but it's still, in my opinion, not nearly enough. And it's poorly written. Again, a book I'll always say it's not a romance. None of her books are romances, except for one of them, kind of, um, that I've read at least. Anyway, that's enough on It Ends With Us. I've talked about that book so many times at this point. Okay, next up we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This easily has to go to Write to Jail. I say The Fountainhead is the worst book I've ever read. Um, and it probably, probably is, I'd probably still say that. This is the worst written book I've ever read. I have never read writing so bad in my entire life. I've never read something that felt more like a first draft. Not even a first draft, like a zero draft. It's just so awful in terms of writing, in terms of character building and character dynamics and relationships and development. There's just none of that going on. The two characters of color are literally named after the color of their skin. The romance is horrible, the lines of consent are non-existent, and it makes no sense. I got nothing out of this after I read it except a massive headache. All right, next up we have the last two Colleen Hoover novels, starting with Ugly Love. This goes in a crime against literature. Actually, you know what? I am gonna put it in Right to Jail because I think I have decided that this is my least favorite of the um, Colleen Hoover books because my god, <laughs> My god. This was uh, the second one I ever read and again no spoilers if you want spoilers you can go watch my Colleen Hoover video but to call this a romance is beyond me. I don't like I don't know what is going through people's heads. I don't know who was on the team the marketing team for this and they were like that's a romance book. Actually, who was in the room when they decided to even publish this in the first place and was like, yeah, no, that should be published. Um, because it shouldn't have been. <laughs> this book is literally criminal in so many ways. This is literally uh, Derek and Casey fan fiction. That's how I describe it. Like Derek and Casey from Life with Derek. It is also one of the most poorly written things I've ever read in my entire life. It's so painful to get through so painful and there's just no describing it okay there's no describing the horrors that I experienced reading that book I felt like I had to turn my brain off I feel like I lost brain cells reading it and it did some permanent psychic damage to be honest with you okay finally the last Colleen Hoover book I have on the list um it's Reminders of Him this one kind of like it ends with us is the one where I think it's like not as bad as the other ones because this one's kind of actually a romance and less offensive than the other ones so this is gonna go in stayed in the drafts I uh, should have stayed in the drafts it did hurt me to read it because it was the longest one too it took forever what can I say at least it's not the others that's that's all I can really say <laughs> Okay, next up we have Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I hate this book for the ableist themes in it. I know a lot of people really like this book. I think this book is horrible. I don't think it's a good romance. I don't think it's well written. I think that the takes that it has on poverty and disability were deeply offensive. I just really, really don't like this book. I'm gonna put this in... I'm probably gonna put this in Bombastic Side Eye, honestly. Um, it's been too long. Like, I could move it up a couple tiers, but I just haven't read it for a really long time, so I don't remember as much of it but I definitely do not like this book. I like it the least out of all of the ones in that tier, for sure. And lastly, we have none other than Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I made a review for this when it came out, and at that time I was still deeply like into my Harry Potter phase. I was still deeply in love with that franchise and that series. And you all know I don't talk about those books anymore for very intentional reasons and I don't feel the way I felt about them before. This was a cash grab in the worst way possible and it's one of the worst written things I've ever read in my entire life as well. This goes in a crime against literature. It's so poorly written and it is so deeply bad. It adds nothing to the story, it actually takes a lot away from the original story, and there's nothing else to be said for it other than they just wanted more money. This was greed. The, the existence of this book is just pure greed. And that's all I have to say. But there you all have it. That is it for my tier list of the worst books I have ever read. This was honestly really fun to do. <laughs> if you've ever wondered what my least favorite books of all time are, I just gave you my favorites list. Now you have my least favorites list. Let me know in the comments below what is your least favorite book of all time or maybe your, like, your top three least favorite books of all time. I'm very curious to know. And also if you've read any of these, what are your thoughts on them? I'm very curious to know. I'm sorry if any of these are your favorite books of all time. Like feel free to love whatever you love. I just love being a hater, okay? It's just, it's in my genes, it's in my core. <laughs> but that is it for this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.